This is the G87 BMW M2, and it is quite possibly the most exciting car that I've driven in recent history, for many reasons. I will explain all of them in this video. Hello, I'm John Marker. Welcome to Driven, and this is the BMW M2. The G87 M2 came along in April 2023 and it made the automotive world sit up and pay attention for lots of reasons. Firstly, because of the way that it looks and we'll talk about that in a bit. But secondly, because it's a bit of a throwback. This G87 M2 resembles what M cars were in their, what I would argue, their halo period, the early noughties. Think of the E46 M3, a lightweight coupe straight six, powerful little fun car that can do it all. Well, this is very similar to that. This has a three litre straight six, albeit twin scroll turbocharged, but it has a very powerful little engine there, the S58, which produces, get this, 453 horsepower in this tiny little car. There are also other exciting things like uh, the torque, 550 newton meters of torque that is daft again for a tiny little car a tiny little car that doesn't really weigh very much either in modern day standards perhaps you know you might be forgiven for thinking this is a light car but at 1.7 tons which this one is that's quite a bit lighter than most other performance cars because of all that power and all that torque it's also quite quick there are two possible 0 to 60 times with the g87 firstly if you get the zf8 flappy paddle gearbox then you're looking at a 0 to 60 time of just over four seconds and if you get the six speed manual then you're looking at just around 4.1 4.2 that's pretty impressive top speeds this thing is limited to 155 like most performance cars unless you tick a box when specking it with bmw which will allow the car to top out at a ridiculous 180 miles an hour that's pretty impressive. Now, perhaps the most significant thing worth mentioning about the particular car here and the fact that it's got all that power in a small package and at quite a light weight is the fact that all the power is going exclusively to the rear wheels. This is a rear wheel drive performance coupe, which is really exciting. Again, think back to the golden eras of M3s, E46 M3. It's like it's been reborn with modern technology. This is exciting. Prices for these start at £63,850, which isn't too bad by modern day standards. And for that price, you get heaps of tech. You get lovely things like uh, interior luxuries, like heated seats and Harman Kardon sound system. You get LED adaptive headlights that move the beam around corners and cut out other cars as they come your way you get things like adaptive suspension you get the shadow line pack which is all this nice black accents no chrome to be seen anywhere i could go on and on and on the list of standard equipment on this is huge but we do also have a fairly exciting list of options they do all come at a cost but the most exciting one is on the inside so why don't i jump in and i'll give you the lowdown of the extras in this car and what all of that costs Right, so options, you're gonna to have to forgive me because I'm gonna to have to refer to my phone for notes because frankly, my memory is just not good enough. But the options on this car, I picked out some highlights because they're all worth talking about. The first one is called the M Race Track Pack. Now that gives you some aesthetic nice things like carbon fiber interior and the wheel and the dash and the center console. It also gives you the carbon roof which of course reduces weight and lowers the center of gravity. We like that, that's a good thing. It also gives you another option by proxy, which is called the M Drivers Pack, and that removes the speed limiter. So this exact car does 180 miles an hour, if you can find a road legally where you're able to do it. And here's an interesting one. It gives you a voucher from your BMW dealership, so you can take your car to a track day, organized by BMW M, where they will teach you how to drive it. How brilliant is that? We also have the M carbon bucket seats. These things are glorious. They're a bit fiddly to get in and out of, but once you're in them, 
lovely lovely place to be uh, they're also heated they're all heated as standard but these ones the fact that they're heated and comfortable and bucket seats are just glorious and then there's the comfort pack that's also been spec'd for this particular car which gives you things like uh, keyless entry welcome lights and uh, what do they call nft the weird qr code thing you can scan so you can essentially use your phone as a key for up to like five other phones which to be honest sounds terrifying to me you don't have to have that turned on but it is a possibility as all part of that comfort pack you've also got things like wireless charging with that uh, and then other upgrades are upgraded brakes with the red calipers and finally one additional option which comes with a price tag of 545 pounds but to me is the best option spec on this car this a six speed manual gearbox and so with all of those options listed including the glorious six speed manual gearbox the total price of options combined now brace yourself is 7900 and 35 pounds meaning that this g87 m2 all in with all options has a price tag of seventy thousand four hundred and ten pounds i'm not going to pretend that that's a small amount of money because it's not however i'm also not going to pretend that that's bad value because it's not and i'll explain more whilst we go for a drive So I guess we should start with the seating position, which is fabulous. This is just something that BMW have got right on their M cars since, well, long before I was legally old enough to be driving M cars. It's just perfect. The steering wheel is in the perfect position. My arms are in the perfect position. Okay, perhaps being right-hand drive means that the pedal positions are just off ever so slightly, but not enough for me to notice or care about really. It is perfect uh, equally perfect are the seats that I'm sat in they are an option these but it is an option well worth ticking they are so comfortable a bit of a novelty perhaps getting in and out of but once you're in them and you're driving it is glorious I picked the car up from BMW HQ down by uh, Farnborough drove it all the way back to Warwickshire via a very 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 scenic route and I think I probably totaled something like 120 miles on my drive home and I couldn't have been happier. By the time I got home, I still felt comfortable. No seat fatigue, which is something you get in sporty bucket seats. Absolutely none of that in here. It is glorious. And the fact that they're heated and properly heated, the top heating setting on the heated seats mode is very high. <laughs> and that is wonderful, especially when driving along in mid-January as we are now. So this being a modern M car, we have of course got multiple different modes and settings for M driving mode, which means you can alter things like the, the chassis feel, the steering feel, the brake feel, um, the way that the engine delivers its power from more kind of sharp and agile and aggressive to a bit softer and more subtle. It's all tweakable and adjustable. I think personally, I would probably prefer just like the good old fashioned E46 days, one singular sport button that makes everything a little bit sharper and then when it's not on it's just a nice soft plush comfortable car but hey look this is what the consumers want and that's what they get the one good feature about it is of course the ability to have presets with lots of different things so we've got the m1 and the m2 buttons here on the steering wheel which enable us to set up a mode that's happy for us i.e if we're a track day enthusiast you can have everything on full sport super firm suspension traction control completely off so you can get the most out of the car there hit that with your m2 button perhaps and then if you want a bit of sporty driving on the road with a little bit of traction control on but softer suspension and softer steering that's what i personally like then you can do that with say your m1 and that's exactly what i've done here and then when you just want it to be a car that you can drive along quite happily without any raucous noise or bumpy suspension just put it into normal driving mode and you've got a really lovely comfortable car to drive around in. So I've not driven an M2 without the upgraded M brakes and so I, I don't feel I'm qualified enough really to say whether the upgrade is worth the money or not. What I can tell you is these brakes are fantastic 
and I have zero complaints about them. They've been utterly flawless in the time that I've driven it. BMWs do have a tendency, M cars specifically, have a tendency to sometimes get a bit hot on the brake pedal, but I'm not doing any track driving with this particular car, so I'm not able to tell you if that is the way. But even if it is, the solution is usually some upgraded pads from an aftermarket performance supplier, and away you go. The actual hardware, the calipers and the discs, are near faultless. You can hear that bonging. That is the, the joy of modern motoring. Every single new car now will bong at you when you go even slightly over the speed limit. So like in this, for example, doing 31 in a 30, the car will tell me off. You can turn it off, but again, you have to do it every single time you get in and turn on the car, which is a bit of faff. But back to the important stuff in terms of driving, the suspension and the chassis is really, really special in this car. I couldn't be happier with it. It's perhaps no secret that the G87 platform is one that is shared with the new M3 slash M4 and 3 Series and 4 Series chassis. It's shortened in length and I think even narrowed slightly so the, uh, to make it more compliant for what it's fit for. Um, but it does mean that you're able to have quite a diverse setup on this car. And I have to say, I'm happiest driving this on the road with the suspension and the chassis in comfort mode because it just feels wonderful. I get very upset with car manufacturers who decide they need to make their performance cars really stiff and bumpy and it's just no point it's just not needed nobody really wants that on the road and even not that many people want it on track either the sport plus setting of suspension in this is just ludicrous and i cannot really imagine if i were taking this on a track day that i'd want it in that firm setting i think comfort is the way to go now it's perhaps no secret that the best thing about this car in my opinion is that 545 pound option the manual gearbox it's the manual gearbox the six speed manual in this that makes this car feel so special and feel so much like the m cars that i just lost after things like the e46 m3 it's a glorious box it really is and i've moaned in the past with the m3 the m4 and even to a certain extent the m5 with the fact that they now just get offered with a zf8 paddle shift automatic box and there is nothing wrong with that box it is a wonderful gearbox and it's used by lots of different manufacturers all over the world because it is so fantastic but to me a pedal a paddle box, sorry, in an M car like this needs to be aggressive. It needs to be almost savage, punching you in the back through every gear change. And that's just something that the ZF8 gearbox doesn't do. So the fact that we've got a manual option in this, it's just perfect. It means that you can drive the car the way that it's designed to be driven. It just makes the whole experience so much more engaging, so much more exciting. It's the perfect thing. And thinking ahead, I really hope that this gearbox sticks around for a while because I have no doubt at all, whilst this is the rear wheel drive only M2, there's going to be a competition coming for sure, which will have the X drive and that, even that with a manual gearbox, I feel like it's going to be good fun. But also, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm almost certain that we're going to see other derivatives, performance derivatives of the M2 coming soon. Things like an M2 CS perhaps, or even an M2 CSL. I don't know that that's going to be a thing, but I feel like BMW, if they don't do it, are going to miss the biggest trick of them all, especially whilst they've got access to a six-speed manual box. It is wonderful. I am so glad that this car exists, and even more so, delighted that it exists with six gears and a clutch pedal. I'm just going to say it. I think this car in this form as just a rear wheel drive car with it before we get to the the mad performance versions that are likely to appear I think it's near perfect I think exactly as it is this is what all BMW M purists want from a car there's nothing more really to add and there's nothing really that I want to take away either I think it is absolutely perfect
and it's so quick. The car doesn't need to be any quicker than this. It really doesn't. I'm sure there will be people watching this going, oh, I am going to buy one, and I'm going to remap it and get it up to 550 horsepower. By all means, go and do it. I really don't think it's needed. I think the power is perfect. The way that the car feels is perfect. The way that it drives is just wonderful. This is an absolute accolade for BMW in a time where, for a lot of people, and me included, the M cars just haven't quite been as good as they have been historically. With this, though, this is good. A fabulous, fabulous car. And so, we probably should talk about the other big talking point that is this car, and that is the way that it looks. The BMW design team in developing the new M2 have, um, well, they've done what they've been doing for generations, making something that initially makes us all go, ah, and then a few years later go, oh. Hmm. I feel like this is a perfect example of that. Some angles at the moment I actually quite like, whereas others, like the back, I'm still just not that sure about. And that may be just because I'm a fussy millennial that likes blobby round shaped cars rather than cars with protruding rear lights. Hmm. The jury's out. I'd love to know what you think. So let me know in the comments below. Do you think this is a good looking car? Do you think the M performance pack with the even more radical rear end is even better? Or do you think this thing is utterly hideous? Let me know. I'll reply to you for now I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget you can see a full written article all about this car with driving impressions and what it's like to live with and all sorts of other intricate bits and pieces of information over on the website driven.site. There you can see that article as well as loads of other articles that we've written about cars just like this. For now I'll say thank you for watching and goodbye. But finally if you have enjoyed this video why not hit the subscribe button and the little bell so that you can see all of our new uploads when they come because we have loads coming. That's all. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.